Uh, we're going to start with um, Patrick Vieira and Crystal Palace. Another win for them. They were behind last night and then came back. We, by the way, the winner coming from um, Wilfred Zaha. Nice finish. I wonder who chose that when we spoke to Paddy Power yesterday. Mm. Who let the side down, by the way? You. Me. You cost us yesterday. Did I? You cost us. We got everything right apart from that. You went for an away win, bizarrely. Yeah, I know. Oh, hey, one up, boo. I thought when they went one up, I thought, yeah, well, you lost. Here we go. Yeah, well. Cheers, Wolves. Um, Patrick Vieira, apparently he's now, uh, he's got the best record of any, or he's the first manager at Crystal Palace, I should say, to have as many or more wins than defeats. This is since El Tell, Terry Venables, in 1976 to 1980. I'm glad you said his name. When you kept saying El Tells, I think, what? You don't know who El Tell is? I know, I know, I know who it is. Why? Why was he called El Tell? I don't know, Terry Venables, isn't it? Yeah, but why? I don't know. That's why. his name when he managed Barcelona. Was Hotel, it? Yeah. God, I'm showing my age now. Well, you're showing yours, actually. I'm what, young? Um, listen, I don't want to. I don't want to sort of you know poo-poo this. So, right? he's, so he's about to poo-poo it. But, but are we getting a little bit too excited? Ten games, Palace have had. Yes, they're up to tenth. Okay, three wins. Is it that exciting? They're playing exciting football. I get that. Their front line's just wonderful to watch. I get that. But three wins out of ten, should we be singing this from the rooftops or not? Um. I think you've got to look, put it into context as to where they've been the last certainly four or five years under Roy Hodgson. I think you have to take it kind of in isolation. Mm -hmm. So Roy did what he was supposed to do. He kept him in the division, but towards the end, it became really, really tough to watch, yeah. right? But since he's been there, you look at what he did, and the signs were there when he got the job, his first transfer window, when he went and bought Mark Gahey, uh, Joe Jim Anderson, Michael Elise, got Conor Gallagher on loan from Chelsea. Young, exciting, good players. A bit, bit, bit untested. We saw um, certainly Anderson at Fulham, who done really well in a relegated team. But you went, mm, I quite love it. Is that this exciting? Then you add him to the likes of Zaha and uh, Abrichezo, who came the year before. You start going, mm, I quite like the new because Tyreek Mitchell left back young. I, I like what Patrick Vieira is doing there. And even when you look at what he's done, certainly last season again, forty eight points. Now that's one of the highest tallies they've ever had in Premier League history. The only people that have had higher tallies than that are Roy Hodgson in, in the 18-19 season, 49 points. Pardew, 14-15 season, 48 points. And Steve Koppel, back in 92, got 49 points. So that tells you, obviously, the job that he's doing. Mm. But I just think, give him an, another season, the football that they're watching is exciting. I believe he should have more wins than he's got because there were times last season, certainly, they should have beaten Arsenal at the Emirates. They let Lacazette score at the end. They should have beat Brighton at home. But they let Neil Morpay get in behind, lob the keeper wasn't last one, minute. Wasn't one of your mob? Yeah, so, Arsenal. Yeah, Lacazette. Yeah. He let Lacazette score at the end. Yeah. So I think they should have more points on the board than they've got. But when it comes to exciting football, I have really, really enjoyed watching this new and improved uh, Crystal Palace. Elise, Edward, Zaha, that's their, that's their problem as well, is when you start looking at where the goals are coming from. Well, I was going to ask. So here's, here's one question. We've got so many to throw out to Crystal Palace fans. Do they need a recognised number nine? And, and where's the weakness? We were talking about this earlier on. Schlupp is, no disrespect, but, you know, where's his best position? Is that an area Premier maybe... League, Premier League winner. <laughs> yeah, OK, yeah. <laughs> but, but is that an area, do you think, where... Yeah. I wouldn't touch the centre-halves. No, they, they, I, like, I like them two centre-halves. Right. Um, the front three we've just spoken about mm. as well. So do you think they need... If if Crystal Palace are going to go to the next level, whatever that is, I don't really know, because top ten Comfort is... Comfortable top ten finish. Top ten, right, OK. I think they need a centre-forward. Um, they've got they've had Jordan Ayew they've got Philip Mateta they've got Odson Edward now when Odson Edward for instance came over here I think he was signed as well by Patrick Vieira last season got two on his debut do you remember against Tottenham yeah, and, yeah, and I yeah. thought Ooh, yeah. yes here we go he's got six goals since then and you know, he's, they, he's they at least 15 to 20 don't well, they from a centre half the last time, they, centre forward, last time they got a centre forward that scored uh, double figures was Ben Teke back in 2016 yeah. and he got 15 in the league and 2 in the FA Cup they need that type of centre forward to go there and, and score goals because I think building up with the likes of Michael Elise Wilfred Zaha Ibrahim Chiesa if, imagine if they had a centre forward up there that, that could score goals regular yeah. oh my they, that, that, is, that three that I've just mentioned is scary on its own ok let me ask you because just quickly Vieira's been there since July last year their best finishes in the Premier League you mentioned a few managers in 2013-14 Pulis took them to 11th Pardew took them to 10th the year after and a couple of years later 17-18 Hodgson took them to 11th so 11, 10 and 11 where is Patrick Vieira going to take this Crystal Palace side to? I think they can comfortably get inside the top 10 Okay, I do when you, when you, start, when you look at the, the Premier League table I think they're more than capable of, of mixing it because they're 10th as you said there they can mix it with Brentford they're on the same points as Brentford Okay, Liverpool's a bit of an anomaly. They're ninth, but... Brighton, you think? Brighton, they can mix it with. Okay. So there's no reason why they can't. All right. Certainly at the... Talk Sport Drive with Andy Goldstein. Monday to Friday afternoon from 4 on AM.
on DAB via the TalkSport app and on your smart speaker. TalkSport.